Hello and welcome back to the Oxford Math live stream. My name's James and we're going to do some maths today. Um, hi to people who are here in chat already. Hi to Jack and Harriet um, and Carl Frederick Gauss, of course. Um, hi to an anonymous person who says hello. Hi, I'm anonymous. Uh, good to see you all. Um, I hope I've set the stream up correctly and people can see and hear me. Oh, and of course, Rabiel, Rabiel was here as well already too. Um, hi to Samantha, uh, people watching. Um, I thought we'd do it a little bit differently today. Um, hi, Avril and Andy. Um, also done my highs. <laughs> hello, Kai and Farhan. This is nice, isn't it? This is called a shout out. Um, hello, Nicholas, Latifi and Chris and Leonard Euler. Um, I thought to start off with, um, we could start with a math question. Now, I know that I titled one of the other sections warm up and we always start with a warm up, um, but I felt that it takes us a long time to get to the math questions and hey, Throw in there with a Matt question, like to Paola and Albors and Charlie, uh, Morbino, uh, and Cougar and Cartan, more anonymous people, uh, Shizzy. Uh, if someone says, you know, the hair is growing on me, which the hair is also growing on me, and don't worry, after a while it will go back to being actually normal. Um, this was too much. We're not doing this again. Thank you for the hair comments. Right, good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. But you haven't hit, come here to get my advice about hair. That would be. A, a terrible place to go for advice about hair. Um, you've come here for advice about problem solving. Um, we've currently got someone in chat, um, they're anonymous, and um, they've asked, I think, a really good question um, about problem solving, which is on the screen just below me. Um, at the moment, that's getting answers from other people in chat, uh, and then I'm gonna come back to that. Um, and you've also come here for Matt questions. So chat and Matt. Um, yeah, I reckon we should just go for it. Um, so let, let's get going. Uh, Jim Lad says, watching you in the gym, and I have to admit, when I read that, I thought that they meant watching me while I'm in the gym, and that was terrifying. So, right, good, on that note. <laughs> okay, so um, the reason I wanted to pull this question out is that we're doing geometry today, and this question is about an area um, with some graphs, so really I could maybe have put this in the graph section of the live stream, or I could put it in the integration section of the live stream as a sort of trick, um, because areas make you think about um, integration. Um, the joke for this one, I suppose, is that it says area, but it's not about integration, um, a tool that we use for finding lots of areas when we're given functions. Um, the joke here is we're going to do it with geometry. Um, and I suppose maybe I've made that easier to spot. Hi, Alfie. Maybe I've made that easier to spot by um, putting it in the geometry section. Um, but there's a skill here that the actual math test, and in fact, lots of maths tests that you might do, and while we're at it, also real life, doesn't come at you neatly labelled by which section it's in. Um, if you've got problems, they tend to just be problems. Uh, so being able to spot which skills we're going to use uh, is, a, is a good way of uh, solving problems. Um, Kai says, is one from last week needed? And I don't think so. Um, I've actually forgotten what was last week. I think it was trigonometry, wasn't it? Uh, we're doing the syllabus, but we're doing the syllabus backwards. So in some sense, nothing is linked together and everything is linked together as indicated by these underlined words. Okay, um, the reason it's a geometry question, it's been on the screen for a while for you to spot this um, if you're playing along live, um, is that if you draw the graphs and you know, as soon as you see the word graphs, you should maybe be thinking about drawing the graphs, whether or not there are any points available for drawing graphs. This question has no points for drawing the graph because it is just a question about getting the right answer. It's a multiple choice question. You get marks for getting the right answer. You don't get marks if you get the wrong answer. Um, this is the graph of square root of two minus x squared. I think quite hard about what it looked like at the sides, although maybe no, I didn't because I realized that this is the same thing as, the top of this is positive, um, but it's the same sort of thing as y squared is two minus x squared be the same thing as x squared plus y squared equals two which is a circle with radius root 2. We're taking the positive square root, uh, so we've got uh, this bit up here. Um, the first equation, as Adrian says, is just a semicircle, isn't it? That goes up to root 2, isn't it? And over here, root 2, and over here, I suppose, negative root 2. Negative, isn't it? Um, good. Uh, so once you've spotted that, the question about areas is about areas of a circle, and we know how big circles are. Um, without any fancy integration or calculus or stuff like that, which is no big circles are. The question is not quite how what's that area, uh, although that would be a that would be a good question, I suppose. Um, if the if the question was something like um, integral two minus x squared from minus root two up to root two, then maybe that would be a bit of a mean question because you might try and go and try to do the integral. Um, but the the way I would do that is to say, aha, um, this integral over here 
is half a, half a circle. It's half a circle with radius 2, uh, so it's pi r squared divided by 2. And oh, no, actually, no, we'll cancel that. It's just pi. I think I've got that right. Good. OK. Um, that's not actually the thing we're asked for. But it's the sort of thing we can do. Um, whether or not you know how to do that integral up there, um, if you spot that it's a semicircle, you get this other bit of your brain, the geometry bit of your brain kicks in um, and goes into, into that. Yeah, we're going to do the how, you, how is your day poll, but we are starting with a math question to mix things up. Um, good. OK, um, we've got to interpret the other one as well. Uh, the other one is a straight line, and it kind of looks like a straight line. You can rearrange it a bit to make it look even more like a straight line, depending on how you like to format your straight lines. Um, maybe you like to write your straight lines as y equals stuff, and, and you can go and rearrange this if you want to. Um, I'm not going to bother, because I think it's an opportunity for me to make mistakes. Um, I tend to make mistakes on rearranging algebra stuff, especially with thirds in these square roots of two. Scare me a little bit. I'm going to make a mistake, I know. Um, so I'm going to work out which straight line it is by trying to spot two points that it goes through. Um, you know, if you've got two points, two points to find a line. Um, that will just draw in the line going through those two points. Um, so I'm going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept because I think that'll be easier. Or at least the x-intercept looks easy. Um, so I can see what's on this line. Okay, so I'm going to do this line. I can see when y equals 0, uh, x is equal to root 2. Because if I plug in 0 over here, this term disappears and x is equal to root 2. Um, what other points do I want to put in? Are there any more e obvious points? Um, I suppose... I'm thinking about plugging in x equals 0. But that looks a little bit messy. A little bit messy. Root 2 over root 2 minus 1. That's the sort of thing that I get wrong. Um, so so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, Suppose I could plug in y equals 1. This is the third point. I said I'd do 2, but maybe I think about 3. I've noticed there's this minus 1. Does y equals 1, x equal 1 work? I think it does. Yeah, 1, 1. And that's interesting because that point, because I've noticed this is minus 1, which if I put a 1 in here and a 1 in there, cancels out. So I found another point on the line. Um, let's try and plot some of these. So this first one, 0, root 2, is over here. Um, that second one, uh, x, I don't know how big root 2 over root 2 minus 1 is. I can go and work it out, but it's you know, somewhere up here, I think. Um, but this le next one, y equals 1, x equals 1, I know where that point is. Um, that's actually on the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 2. Um, uh, so this is 1, 1. That's actually on the circle, uh, which is very relevant. I can draw my line in now, I've got two points. And again, I could have tried doing the... Oh, gosh. <laughs> could have tried doing the algebra... Uh, and found out how high up that point is, but then I'd have to then find out where the line intersected the circle, and I kind of bumped into it by mistake, finding that point where the, the line intersected the circle anyway. Um, so that was all very nice. Um, yeah, if you rationalise it, uh, it's not too bad. When they both equal 1, says Jack, and x equals 1, says an anonymous person. Sorry, there's a little bit of lag in chat. These comments came in. There they are. These comments came in before I said it, compared to when you heard it. Timelines. It's all very, all very complicated. Uh, right, okay. Um, what have we got then? We've got a line and we've got a semicircle and we want the area bounded. I think quite hard about which area it's bounded, but I suppose I can see it in the picture. This area here. And you could go and do some integration. I don't think we should do some integration. I think we should do sector of a circle minus area of a triangle. And at this stage I've got a plan in mind. It's something involving pi minus something involving triangles. And it turns out to be good. Um, Areas of triangles and areas of triangles and semi and bits of circles. I think we're fine. Yeah, Cartan's got the method. If if you're not sure what I did there, Cartan's got a comment in chat that explains what happened in that last step to get us down to that. Uh, it's possible, I suppose, once you've realised that it's a semicircle and a line and something like this is gonna happen to do this kind of all oh, something involving pi for the circle minus something involving root two for a triangle maybe, and just guess it's B and move on, but you never know. Uh, there are no calculators on the mat. So this, the mat is the math test for Oxford, and it's no calculators allowed. Uh, which makes a little bit, it tests your fluency of being able to manipulate things like this, and also your ability to avoid manipulating things like this. Um, all about those sectors. Um, good. I don't know what the other options are supposed to be. Is this just some mess of pies and root twos? Um, I don't know why, why that's there. It's all sign of root two, which makes even less sense to me. I don't don't quite know where that could come from. Possibly, I think if you go and try and do the integral, if you try and do the integral, um, if you do further maths A level, eventually you learn how to do this integral, 
up in the top right. And if you get the limits wrong on that integ integral, then I think you maybe get something involving sines and root twos, but still, I don't really see how you could get there. And then this is like just a sort of joke option, I think, pi squared over six, because that's semi-famously, not an A-level math fact, but that's semi-famously equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the squares. Um, which is not a fact that you know, learn at school, but hey, there we go. Um, good, right, I thought that'd be a fun way to start. Can you bring an abacus in? Uh, I think no. Who would have tried to integrate? Anonymous person in chat. Here's what, we found someone who admitted. This is the reason I like anonymous chat. Um, anonymous chat will admit things that named chat might not admit. Um, anonymous chat will say, I would have tried to integrate it. There you go. Okay, so I, I, I respect that entirely. Uh, they put the uh, they put their, their tears face as well, but yeah. Uh, people in chat are very proud of themselves noticing the yes, yes, there we go. Oh yeah, how do I know theta for the area of the text? That's a good question. So the area of the text, I'm, I've brushed over doing the actual area of the text bit. Um, broadly speaking, you shouldn't trust me. You should go and do the calculation yourself. <laughs> um, do the, doing the calculation yourself is good for you, right? Um, here's what you know. Uh, you know that the sector starts at the x-axis over here. And you know that this line goes from the origin up to the point 1, 1. So you know everything. <laughs> you know where this point is. You know where this point is. You know where the origin is. You know where all the corners of the triangle are. The triangle has no mystery to you. Um, in particular, you know what you can work out what this angle is because you know that there's this triangle with side one and side one. Um, so it's 45 degrees. I know this triangle. It's got side length root two over here, one, one, root two, 40, 45 degrees. Um, but in general, if you're trying to keep track of whether you should know something or not, um, a good trick you can play is to just keep track. Do I know, is this thing, if you built this thing out of the information that we've got, knowing where the corners are, well, now it's specified. If we just knew two of the side lengths, then it would be kind of degree of freedom, bit of floppiness. Uh, it's the area of the sector. Uh, and people with three blue, one brown, there we go. Um, gradient equals tan theta. Yeah, it's a really good fact. Um, I use this fact sometimes, a uh, Kazan fact in chat, um, about the way that uh, you, if you know you have the line y equals mx, uh, there's some relationship between mx, that line, um, the, the number m is related to this angle theta um, between the line and the x-axis. Um, there's a relationship there which is, I think, you draw a triangle in, like the triangle we just drew in, and you label some sides, and I think it turns out that m is equal to tan theta, which is sometimes useful if you want to switch between this very algebraic way of thinking about lines versus this more geometric way of thinking about lines with thetas in. Anyway, we got off track. Um, Good. There you go. Pop, pop, pop. Right. Pop, pop, pop. Okay. Let's do the normal. Let's do the normal. Let's zoom out. We started with a math question. I thought we start. We 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 got in super hot. Right. Good. Uh, how was your day, chat? How are you? It was A levels today, right? A level results. I I wasn't really sure if we were talking about it or not, but maybe we are talking about it. It was A level results day today. Um, I don't know how many people watching get A level results today. I guess if you're in year twelve in the UK and you're doing. A levels early, then you might have got your A level results already um, for A level maths. Um, or if you're uh, year 13 because you're watching uh, during year 13, then you might have got the rest of your A levels. And I hope you got everything you wanted. Uh, good. Um, behind the poll, I'll read out some chat messages behind the poll. Um, how much prep should we be doing outside these live streams? I would do the uh, I would do the worksheets in advance if you can, or after the live stream, or some people I know are playing along live, um, which is fine too. Um, if you've got time, then you might like to look at older past paper questions. Um, there's some range, I think I go back to 2013 for the questions on these worksheets. If you want to look at older questions, um, I don't think you need to do all of them, but if you've got spare time and you want some maths problems, hey, you like maths, right? I like maths, there are some more maths questions. Um, but you know, you've got the rest of your life to live as well. Um, more anonymous people this year, maybe, who knows? Math is hard. Um, both sides of the triangle, there we go. Great day all round. People are voting for fours and fives today, which is pretty good. Somebody's got AS results, so we've got AS, AS further maths results. Sounds like people's results have gone okay, which is nice. I like that. Um, good, okay. Uh, as always, I'm looking for the 3% of people who have voted one star or two star. I hope we can do that better. Um, I like the fact that even though you're having a one star day, you have tuned in to 
learn some geometry facts, it would have been much easier to have a one star day and not tune into a geometry live stream. <laughs> that would, in fact, be the default, I think, for approximately 8 billion people have picked that. Oh, I'm not, I suppose. Anyway, never mind. Right, I've over overdone it. Okay, good. Um, that's how you today, and I've got a sense of people's A-levels as well. Um, I want to come back to this question that somebody asked just before we went live. Um, I've been finding it a bit hard to be creative. It's a good, good way of looking at things, I suppose. That kind of really human skill of being creative, of coming up with new ideas, um, is something that I suppose we're currently trying to teach computers to do, to be creative and come up with new ideas, but it's not going very well overall, I think. Getting, getting somewhere um, with making computers be more creative and inventive. Um, anyway, so this person, who I assume is not a computer, um, wants to do problem solving uh, on map so they don't always see the question methods they want to use in long questions, especially like question five. Um, question five is a little bit unusual. It, it tends to not use much of the maths from the syllabus and just rely on, here's some stuff, please work with the stuff that you've got. Um, have a look at some question fives if you want to see what I mean by that. Um, would you have any tips on how I can improve? And I've asked for... Um, people in chat to put their replies down first before I before I reply. I have no idea what people have said. I'm going to have a look in a second. Um, Raphael picked up that A star in maths. Well done, Raphael. Uh, the worksheets are on the MatLive homepage. There's a link link on screen and in the description. And if you search for Oxford Matt live stream, I hope you find it. Um, right, let's read some replies over here. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, for Tom, I was thinking about a little bit about Dali, a little bit um, of people being creative and doing stuff. But then sometimes the Dali pictures have other people's signatures mysteriously in the corners, which makes it very strange. Uh, James, can you explain how to solve recursions? A very hard topic in Matt. We have a, a live stream in a couple of months. Uh, live stream number 10 is on recursion. There's a schedule plan, schedule for the live stream in the homepage. Right, uh, so Harriet, uh, I'm reading replies now to this pink question underneath. Um, the more you do, the less time you spend getting being stuck. So this is something related to something that I've said before about, uh, reminds me of something I, I've said before about uh, practicing being stuck feels absolutely terrible because you know, you're know you stuck on math problems and you like excelling at math problems and, and being you know, just flying through them. Practicing being stuck on problems is really good for you um, because if you want to go on to hard math problems, you're going to spend a lot of time being stuck. Um, and then a uh, person with username Carl Frederick Gauss links to a 3 blue one brown video. Um, I think that link looks genuine, so that's, that's good. Um, Cartan wants to uh, draw radius, draw the radius onto circ circles with geometry. I like the specific tip. Um, and thinking about, uh, you practice the basics so you don't have to think about it. This is the kind of fluency advice that if you're really good at basic stuff, then you have free up more of your time for thinking about advanced uh, ideas or planning or what you're going to have for lunch after the test. Um, and if you first you don't succeed, then go back and have a look at it again. So there's the person with the username, Nicholas Latifi. And Amy, oh, I skipped Amy. Do gr good graph sketching, which can sometimes just uh, help you visualise things. I love that graph sketching comment as well, because um, we've got an episode on graph sketching, I think, next week or possibly the week after. Um, I like the way that if you're lucky enough to be uh, have the gift of sight, um, then sketching a graph lets you activate the bits of your brain that are good at looking at pictures and good at identifying um, uh, shapes and spotting relationships between things. Like that relationship between the semicircle and the line that we had before um, is quite hard to think about in an abstract sense, but once you draw the picture, you, your brain remembers that probably they intersect in some places. Um, okay, we're going to put that through. Uh, I think that's a link to a Discord server. Oxford is not responsible for content on other websites. and. If you meet other people on the internet, please remember that there is no guarantee they are who they say they are. For example, Carl Frederick Gauss in chat is unlikely to be Carl Frederick Gauss. Please be safe on the internet, everyone. Um, can't find the comment. Yeah, the comment's got a bit buried. If you sort by top, it's now top. And oh, it's now picking up more things. Um, good. Okay. Try some step questions is good advice as well. Um, do Oxford Maths look at Scottish higher grade bands? Um, I can't remember what we say. I think we do look at the difference between A1 and A2. That sounds important because of results around at the moment. No, we don't. An A is an A in Scottish highs. Sorry. That's why I looked it up, because I gave the wrong answer. Good. Uh, am I a neuroscientist? Oh, yeah, no. I am not a neuroscientist. Disclaimer. I don't know how your brain works, and I should not give you brain advice. Uh, thanks for the reminder. Uh, reset grades. Okay, so there's, yeah, there's people worried about resets. Um, 
we prefer not to see reset grades, of course we prefer it if you got the grades the first time, but um, we know that sometimes people do reset grades and then get um, high grades and then go on to do well at university. Can you maths and fourth year in engineering? Charlie, I think engineering is quite specific and you get, um, you need to, the point of doing engineering is usually to be qualified as an engineer and they normally need four years of training to be an engineer. So I think that's quite hard for engineering reasons, not for math reasons. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, oh yeah, sorry gals. Um, right, good. Bit of chat lag. We're good. Okay. Right, I'm up to date with chat. Uh, three A levels in two years is normal. I'm fine. Right, good. Okay, I'm going to unflag this one as well. I think it's got some good chat. The chat's descending a tiny bit, but we've we, we got some really good answers there as well. It's just something I like about the, the um, my live stream as well. It gets people together from wherever you are to do some maths together. Right, we're doing a slightly different format. Have you noticed? We did a math question first, and now we're going to zoom back out and learn math that we might need to do that math question. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Here we go. Can we switch from math to math and CS? Someone has asked just in time before I start. Um, can't promise it. Uh, often very difficult because the content is different in the first year. So straight away you're learning some different things, which makes it hard to switch. Um, good. Okay, right. I'm going to stop doing admissions questions. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to stop doing admissions questions because I want to talk about math. Also because it is after five o'clock. And I've been talking about admissions things all day for my normal job. Uh, this is my, anyway, this is, <laughs> this is the weird bit of my job. Let's go. Um, math syllabus, so uh, for geometry, um, there's very little written down here, but I think it includes lots of things behind the scenes. Um, in the UK, for people watching around the world here, um, in the UK, People learn quite a few facts at uh, GCSE level, which is before A levels, the last two years of their school. So they've already learned some facts about circles, for example, um, which they then know by the time they get onto A level mathematics. Most of the math syllabus just recaps A level math syllabus. So it's sort of assumed that these people in the UK still know those facts about circles. Um, and then there's some other things that are quite wide topics, um, like coordinate geometry can include an awful lot of different things. Um, can mean a lot of things to different things to different people in different countries. So I've tried to make the revision notes include things that to give some examples of of the sort of level that we're expecting for for these topics. Uh, in particular, I know that if you do a lot of Olympiad mathematics, then just the word geometry means an incredible amount of stuff. Um, if you're really interested in vectors, then there's a lot of stuff to know about vectors in the plane. Um, I did a whole lot of vector calculus at university. None of it's in the mat. Um, Equations, straight lines, and circles, probably fine. Um, good. Okay. Uh, I only really have one Discord link in chat, I think, and we've had it. Uh, I get nervous sometimes when there's too many, like, uh, I don't know. What's the difference between maths and Well, they're just different exams. They're different exams. Circle theorems. Yeah, Alfie. I think people should know some circle theorems. Eigenvectors. I think people should not know any of eigenvectors. Well, I mean, you can know some eigenvectors if you like, um, but you won't need them today or, or in the maths. Right, should we do the revision? Let's do some revision. Yeah, so here's an important comment from an anonymous person. Thank you, anonymous people. As always, um, a lot of vectors and coordinate geometry missed out from GCSE because that, for you, this cohort, is the back, that's back when lockdown and COVID and not having school going on. Um, good. Uh, this person's got their university place. Hooray! Um, Eigenvalues. <laughs> um, yeah, I work with Dimitri. Okay, Rick, good. Um, I've got distracted again, you can tell. I am moderating chat again today. We've got a slight HR thing, which means that for a few weeks here, I'm moderating chat. I'm empl employing myself to moderate chat, except I'm not paying myself to moderate chat. And from from next week, I think, ne fingers crossed, from next week, I'm allowed to employ a student again to moderate chat. Um, I'm not going to rise to that. Uh, good, let's go. Um, okay, revision. Promise this time for real. Not distracted. Actually going for it. Um, so we think people should know about 2D geometry. Um, I think at school maybe some people in the UK learn some 3D geometry eventually, but um, I think 2D geometry is probably enough for every math question I've seen. Um, so you have like the x-axis, that's the word for the y equals zero line. You have the y-axis um, and Although this looks like the picture that people draw for complex numbers, complex numbers are, once again, not on the mat. 
Um, right, good. Okay, so this bit here is the line x equals zero. This bit here is the line y equals zero. These are important lines. Okay, um, vectors, all I think, I spent quite a lot of time boiling down what you need to know into this pair of sentences. Um, vectors is just a different way to store that information. Um, people use them either to describe coordinates or to describe the displacement between two points, which sounds very confusing, but is really not that bad. Um, you can add them together and it does the thing that you want them to do, um, where if you have your position vector of 1, 1, and then you add on the vector 2, 2, two 1, you end up uh, vector 3, 2 by adding together the components to add together these top components to get this thing, and adding together these bottom components components to get this bottom thing. Uh, and in that sense, that's why it's helpful to think about them as either positions on their own or as displacements when they're put into these binary combinations. Um, I don't think there's really a, a big difference between position vectors and displacement vectors in a way. They're not really different classes of object. Um, it's kind of the interpretation of what this addition means. Um, it doesn't matter which one you imagine is which. Uh, yeah, the students do get paid to moderate because it is a job. Uh, is this useful for Tamua? Yeah, I hope so. Um, are vectors the same as matrices? Uh, when there's no matrices on the map, so I'm not going to not going to get involved. Even though mat is the first three letters of matrix, there are which would you could use for so many great like crossover questions. They're not they're not there today. Um, good. Ooh, vectors are amazing. The dot product is not on the mat syllabus. Okay. Um, good, there's this magnitude of the vector which is sometimes written like this. Um, it measures the distance between um, the end of that vector and the origin, if you're thinking of it as a position vector, which is sort of a way of restating the, the fact about the fact about uh, distance between a point and the origin. Like we already used this fact today when we pointed at a point on the uh, the point one one and said, aha, that's the distance root two from the origin. I'm not sure how helpful it is to think, aha, the magnitude of this vector is root two. But if you want to think of it in terms of that, like that, then you can. Um, the distance is then the, the distance between two points. You can do some Pythagoras or something, uh, but there's no way to write that down. Um, and you can also do more arithmetic on vectors. Um, so I'm sort of rattling through some vector facts here. Um, I think in terms of math, if you understand a vector to be two numbers stacked up like this, then you're going to be fine. Um, coordinates being roughly the same thing, but with different punctuation in between. Um, I'm really sorry to any maths teachers watching who have spent years teaching people the important differences between things like this and things like this. Um, and there is a difference, it does matter. One of them is sideways and one of them is up and down. Um, right, Pythagoras in it. Yeah, it's Pythagoras. If you're interested in other definitions of distance, so everything on math, very standard definitions of distance, hopefully very familiar, hopefully what you learn in school. Um, if you're interested in other hypothetical measures of distance, uh, there's an episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club with Prisma uh, talking about uh, an other definitions that you could use for distance. Um, good. Da, 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 ba, da, da, da. Just catching up with chat. Uh, interviews this year are online. Um, good. Hmm. Right. Okay. Um, there's a multiplication. You can multiply vectors by scalars. Um, so if you've got something like three times time, and you want to multiply one, two by three, that gives you the vector three. So you just multiply each component. Um, that gives you a way to scale vectors. Um, so it takes, takes your initial vector your input vector of 1, 2, when you multiply it by 3, you end up with something that is in the same direction, but 3 times as long, uh, 3, 6. Maybe that's obvious from it just being 3 times as big in the x direction, 3 times as big in the y direction, but hey, that's what it does. Uh, yeah, that, okay. <laughs> uh, da, 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 there we go. Uh, equation of lines, hopefully you learn this at some point. This is the sort of thing that back when A-levels were modular, we used to describe as sort of C1 to mean core one, the kind of first bits of core maths that you learn in A-level. I understand that A-level is no longer modular, uh, so that no longer means anything to you, but we used to call this C1. Uh, anyway, um, you might know different ways to write the equation of a line. Um, y equals mx plus c is a really popular one. Um, it's the one that I default to. Um, some people really like ax plus by plus c equals zero, which it looks kind of nice, doesn't it? It's all on the left. Um, don't confuse that c with the previous c. 
Um, and some people really swear by this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is a pretty clever one, actually. I quite like this. So the line through, uh, it goes through the point x1, y1, you see? So the line through uh, 2, comma 3 with gradient with gradient 4, that might be a thing that you're asked to do. Um, in fact, there's a bit of A-level maths I remember where that's, you're asked to be, do that multiple times. Um, so being able to write that down as the equation of the line. And then I can rearrange it if you need me to, but just being able to write that down is sometimes helpful. Um, parallel and perp perpendicular parallel and perpendicular lines, um, two lines are perpendicular if their gradients multiply to give minus one, and they're parallel if they have the same gradient. Um, this fact about perpendicular lines multiplying to give gradients multiply to give minus one is really good. Um, it tells you that like y equals three x and y equals ten minus a third x um, are perpendicular. Uh, I think this is a fact that I I think I underappreciated this fact when I was in school. Um, it's just quite neat that there's a rule for when things are perpendicular. I mean, it's, it relates to later on you learn about dot products and you learn about these relationships between the gradients and the angles that we mentioned and you learn about angle combination rules and you learn loads of reasons why this is true. Um, but here and now, for Matt, hey, it's just kind of neat. There's a rule. Um, if they multiply to give, if the gradients multiply to give minus one, the uh, lines are perpendicular. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, how easy is it to teach yourself applied maths? Quite hard, I think, because you need to learn quite a lot of vector calculus to get to do stuff. Um, wanted to come stay at Oxford, sad face. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, I know that some colleges are arranging so that if you get made an offer, you can come and visit the college. Don't know, but I don't know about stay at the college as well. Can I prove the negative reciprocal gradient thing, please? Uh, no, thank you. Ah, teacher said we should prove the result to use it. Okay, people are really keen on proving this fact. Do I want to do the tangent? How are we doing for time? It's half past five. How much revision have we got? Got quite a lot of revision on this one. Quite a lot. I've got a page to go of revision. Let's do proof techniques. Let's do proof techniques. Okay, it's being creative and proof techniques. I kind of try to outline how you might try and prove this or why it's true. Let's see if we can prove it only using things that only using things that we know. Is that possible? No, I think I've thought of a proof that uses things that things that you know. Um, I'll pick. I'll pick. Um, so this ten minus one third x. I'm going to ignore the ten to start off with. I'm going to think about two lines. Y equals three x. I'd like to really think about the line y equals three x first. We're off on a tangent. Everyone hold on. It's happening. Um, this is the line y equals 3x. If it's your first time joining the live stream, then you might be wondering why I'm not getting to the point and just carrying on with the plan. Uh, and the answer is I'm easily distracted. Um, so I'd like to show you something about this line. Um, it has, uh, you can draw on a triangle like this, 1, 3, right angle. Um, and then I don't really know this angle over here, but you know, Believe me, there's some trigonometry you could do to work out that angle. Don't want to find it. Don't want to care. I don't care how many degrees it is, how big it is. There's an angle up here. I'll call that phi. You could do some trigonometry to work out how big that angle is. Um, that's pretty good. Um, okay, now I want to draw a new line for you. Um, y equals negative one third. Okay, and I want to draw on a little triangle on here as well. Uh, let's draw a, yeah, let's draw a small triangle. Uh, negative one third. Yeah, I think I'll draw on this triangle. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is one, and this is, I suppose this is one third, this, this distance over here. I'm going to zoom in slightly. There we go. Um, so this is my line y equals minus one third x, um, and that's one third over there, one across here. Now, here's the punchline, I suppose. Um, this small purple triangle over here, uh, let's call that O, A, B, C, label your points. And triangle O, B, C is similar to triangle O, A, B. Let's label the sides in the right order, O, B, O, A, B. Let's just label them in a random order, why not? Um, these are similar triangles uh, because of the side, because of the ratios of the side lengths. Um, and that means that actually this angle over here is theta. And this angle over here 
is phi. Now I know the angles in a triangle add up to 90 degrees, so over here, aha, this angle between the two lines, theta plus phi, well I know that's 90 degrees from the triangle facts, but it also tells me the angle between the two lines is 90 degrees. So therefore, that's a right angle between those two lines. And that's how I would prove it if you uh, ask me to do it only using maths that's on the math syllabus. Good, right, okay. Uh, did I get away with it? Yeah, so uh, proof in chat, let's do proofs in chat as well. So I wasn't moderating chat while that happened, and some proofs came in. Dot products, brilliant, love it. Uh, look, oh, this is complicated dot product stuff. It looks legit to me. It's really complicated though, isn't it? And you have to know what a dot product is. And you have to kind of believe that dot product has got something to do with angles, which, you know, never mind. Uh, yeah, wait, hang on. This Is this my proof as well? Rectangle, triangle. Okay. Uh, one side, yes. Magnitude one, perpendicular side of size M. The definition of tan, taking the angle tan theta. I think this is the same as mine, but you've used some facts about tan, I think. I think it's the same as my proof, but using some facts about tan. I like mine because it's got colours and uh, a pretty picture. Cool, right, that's how I would prove that those two lines are... Uh, right angles, um, exercise for the reader, um, you actually wanted to know about, you know, in general, changing those numbers not to just three and minus one third, but changing them to something else, that's not too bad, that's not too bad at all. Adding the constants on, I'll leave it as exercise for the reader, but you can add the constants on and the things stay perpendicular. <laughs> um, good. Yeah, so I did the first first bit of generalisation is to do nx instead of 3x. Um, I... I... I know exactly what you mean. And I used to be exactly like that, to always want to generalise and to label things um, with M's and stuff. Um, Semi-recently, I've started doing a particular case with numbers in because I've realised that my brain is better at keeping track of numbers rather than keeping track of loads of different letters um, to remember that that's just a constant. Um, if, I, if I do it with M's in, then I've got another letter of the alphabet bouncing around. Um, I found out that my brain is better at tracking it if it's just a number. And then what I can do afterwards is go in and replace all the threes um, and essentially run through the proof again, but imagine that I'm changing changing all the numbers around. Um, so that's an M and then that's a 1 over M and that's a 1 over M. Um, and my angles are all generically labelled, so I'm fine. Um, I found that I'm better at, better at generalising than I am at starting with a big general problem. Um, triangles are similar because the side lengths, uh, side length ratio. Uh, so the, the ratios of the side lengths here is 1, and over here it's 1 third. 1 third is 1 third of 1. And here it's 3 uh, going down to 1 on that side. So this triangle, this big triangle at the top, if you take it and you rotate it down and make it 1 third smaller, you get the small, small purple triangle at the bottom. Um, that's what similar triangles mean, um, I think. Um, good. Uh, so yeah, okay. I think generalising it is good. I now do my generalisation as a kind of second pass. Um, also, look, as I was explaining that out loud, it was easier to use the number three than to, so I could say one third, rather than saying one mth. Uh, one mth is quite a strange thing to say. Um, yeah, it's sort of side angle side, but it's more, it's more angle, 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 I think. <laughs> they've both got a right angle, they've got the same, got the same angles. But I suppose I'm, I want to use the fact that, I want to, hang on, that's my punchline that I have the same angles. I suppose I'm secretly thinking about ta arc tans, thinking about the way they have the same this, these two pink angles have the same tan because the, the tangent is the ratio. Maybe that's more direct to you. Waff, waffle something about tan rather than waffling something about this. Uh, does it have the if but not the only if? Uh, probably, I think it's all reversible, but I think I'm fine. <laughs> not a super interested. Uh, if they're right angles, then if they're right angles, then split it at the x axis, label the angles. Oh, look, you've got some similar triangles. Similar triangles mean the gradients multiply to minus one. Seems seems about right. Uh, how many hours a day? I mean, you're probably doing some sort of maths at lots of moments, even when you're not doing something like this. One over m. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Could have said one over m. Um, yeah. Okay. And two people have now called me out for doing the if case, but not the only if case. So, exercise for the reader. Reverse all of my arguments. Right. That was the tangent. Struggle with visualising in my mind's eye. Aphantasia. Oh, no, I'm not a neuroscientist. Um, I find to imagine things as ch parameters has changed. Geometry could be hard. Advice. Uh, draw lots of pictures. Um, force your... Force yourself. Actually, I don't know how Aphantasia works, whether you can draw the pictures or, or not, but... I don't, so I don't know if that's useless advice, but 
okay try drawing try drawing pictures uh, good right and oh, I should have done that as a joke thank you very much for doing the joke in chat chat is funnier than me example a billion out of infinity um, good right what were we talking about oh yes we were talking about equations of lines and circles that's a fact from the math syllabus um, swerving back on track here we go um, here's the equation of a circle it's got center a b and radius r um, this is if you really think about it just a fancy way of saying that the distance from a b i've switched to a purple pen but i kind of like it um, the distance from a b is equal to r which is the kind of definition of a circle where you say all the points that are the distance r from the from the circle um, okay the radius is is like that that's how circles work um, do I have any allowances for congenital blindness in math applicants? Um, in the past, we've produced uh, special versions of the test paper for uh, people who need it, um, which is quite fun. There's a machine that makes them. Uh, and yeah, we do, we've done modifications of people on course like that as well. Well, the math paper's not lined or square. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> okay, right, circle, circle facts. Uh, right, angle in a semicircle is a right angle. This is a fact that I believe is called Thales theorem sometimes. Um, here we go, here's a semicircle. We had a semicircle earlier and we didn't need any of the angles in it, but here's a diagram of this fact. Oh my goodness, that's a right angle. It's such a good fact. What a great picture of a semicircle. Uh, and what a great fact. Um, that I like this that even if, if you move the point around, so if you imagine moving this point left and right, and it stays as a right angle, and in fact the converse is true. So in fact, if you know it's a right angle, then you can draw a draw a semicircle um, over with the diameter as the right, as diameter as the hypotenuse of the triangle. You can draw in the semicircle given the triangle, just like you can draw in the triangle uh, on the semicircle. Um, see, on right, good. Is a great fact. We're not proving it. Right, good. Uh, <laughs> tangents at right angles to the radius. And these two made it onto Matt's flashcards. Um, so if you haven't found them yet, there is a series of Matt flashcards. If you go to the Matt uh, homepage, uh, further down, there's a link to get some flashcards. Um, I forgot to mention this last week, but two weeks ago, we had a request from uh, someone in chat to put them all on the website Cram, uh, which is a website that does interactive uh, flashcards so that you can have a look at uh, the flashcards like that and it lets you flip through them super fast so if you want to flip through them and practice with your arrow keys on your keyboard having a look at the the mac cards um, which is a great option if you don't have access to a printer and you would like to look at 40 cards with facts from the mat syllabus on but also on your computer uh good so thank you to the person two weeks ago who asked for that and we scrambled to put it up one week ago we scrapped we thought we've got to get this for the next live stream with the team scrambled, we built it, we put it on Cram, um, uploaded it just like just like this person wanted, and then uh, I let the team down by forgetting to mention it. <laughs> so <laughs> we did it, we had it perfectly ready and ready to go, uh, and then I had to apologise to everyone and put it put it up to uh, put it tell you this week. There we go. <laughs> one time we made a deadline. The one time we made a deadline, and I didn't tell anyone. Um, when I'm going through the flashcards, I try to prove all the facts. Um, a fun exercise, not for maths, but a fun exercise is to take the formula booklet. Oh, you don't get formula booklets anymore. Did you get formula booklets for COVID reasons? Some people have formula booklets. Okay, formula booklets exist. To so find an old formula booklet um, for A-level mathematics or equivalent um, and just write, prove that on the front. And then that's your question. That's your homework. Um, prove that formula booklet. Um, it's like quadratic equation. Prove the quadratic equation. The next thing down is the, the geometric series fact. Prove that as well. Just go through. Prove, prove that. Um, so there's your show that question. Ah, brilliant. One person, at least one person here is a formula booklet for A-level. Please write the words prove that on the front. Put a full stop on the back page. And that, that, is, that is a question. There we go. Um, it is much harder to prove everything in A-level maths than it is to know everything in A-level maths. And it is not not relevant for mat revision which is what we are allegedly doing right now so let's carry on doing that by remembering how big circles are um circles have area pi r squared um where r is the radius pi is this brilliant number that's about three um the circumference is the distance around the outside that's two pi r 
Um, mostly I'm putting this fact here so that if you've learned maths in a different language, then you can match up your expectations with this language. I don't know if that's helpful or not. It's probably not that helpful. Never mind. Um, we expect you to be able to work out the, the area of a, a chunk of a circle. Um, so if you see like one sixth of a circle, uh, you probably know that that is 60 degrees in the middle. Um, and you can probably work out that the area is pi r squared over 6. The temptation to write pi squared over 6 there was very large. Um, yeah, it was a math question from absolutely years ago about proving sine and cosine, which was ages ago. It, maths changed still this a couple of times. Um, <laughs> so someone's trying to distract me with the tangent. Um, why is the circumference of a circle the derivative of the area? And they're right, that d by dr of pi r squared is equal to 2 pi r. Um, and they might also know the fact that the um, derivative of the volume of a cube, uh, volume of cube is equal to 4 pi r squared, which is the surface area of a cube. Um, neither of those proofs are on the mat syllabus. Ooh, dear. Okay, good. Right. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Well, here's this sector of area of sector fact. Um, and length of arcs, we, you know, how long this bit of edge. If you have a circular cake and you cut it into six pieces, how much cake are you getting and how much icing are you getting around the outside? Uh, did I say it's not sphere? What did I say? Did I say cube? Oh no. This is a disastrous pair of comments in chat for me. Really? Oh, that's very disappointing. Did I actually say cube for four thirds pi r cubed? That's a new low. Oh, I don't clip that. Right. Good. Right. Okay. Oh, welcome to the geometry live stream where we are learning about shapes. And I think that cubes are round. Uh, right. We have some warm-up problems. Um, I, If you get the worksheet before the live stream, you can try some warm-up problems, which is a way to warm up and try adding together vectors and drawing diagrams to show vectors. Um, the warm-up questions this week were all about uh, getting familiar with vectors, writing down equations of lines, and look, just to demonstrate again, uh, over here we need to find the gradient first. Uh, it's a little bit of work, right? We've got to say something like, I used to be really good at these, to say, oh, it goes down by six units while you go sideways by two units, so its gradient is minus three, and then to write down why it goes through this first point, so y minus five is equal to negative three times x minus one. I think I'm right, but we'll see. I don't know what a cube is, so there we go. Um, is the map written for this year? Yes. Uh, and I might, after the live stream, go and check whether I've mixed up any cubes and spheres on that. I don't know, there's no cubes or spheres on the map light. Have I got cubes and spheres? How long have I believed that cubes are the round ones and spheres are the pointy ones? It's pretty bad. Anyway, <laughs> we've got more, more equations of lines as well. Um, I'm getting full. Maybe I'm becoming more keen on this way of writing down equations of lines. Um, there's a sort of open-ended question on the warm-up to try doing this other way around question where you, I would like the, the lines to have this property. Please could you give me some lines that do this? Uh, there are loads of possible solutions for this because there are loads of equilateral triangles in the plane. Um, so you can do this in lots of different ways. Um, yeah, it, topologically, yeah, ooh, topologically, here we go. Um, good. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's like 100. 100 people. How bad could it be? Um, good. In the live stream would get a lot more views if we leaked the 2022 map paper. That would be really good for um, subscriber count, probably. I don't know. Would you subscribe? Probably not. You've already seen the map paper. So you know, leaking it would get uh, views but not subscribers. And YouTube actually works by watch time. So you know, I'd have to link the, link the paper very slowly, which seems like the opposite of the mistake I would make. Um, good. I am stop I'm no longer making sense. It's A level results week. A level results week is pretty complicated. Hated question six. Oh, question six is this one. Yeah, so question six. How would I do it? How would you do it? Somebody in chat has got a suggestion. M equals tan theta. Yeah, so it's cartan again with the M equals tan theta trick. Um, one way you can do it is to choose three points that are the same distance apart. Um, so choose your points first. So I might choose points by picking them equally spaced on a circle. And choose them at, at 1, 0 and minus a half, root 3 over 2. 
and minus one half comma negative root three over t. Um, because I know that they're equally spaced around a circle, so that's an equilateral triangle. And then I've got to write down all my lines, but we've just done some practice. I'm getting quite good at writing down the equations of lines that go through points. Um, in some sense, this question is, is sort of getting you to describe a triangle, pick a triangle. There are loads of equilateral triangles, pick one. Um, quite a popular one that um, I've tried doing this question before, where you pick one that goes up here and sort of sits on the x-axis. So you try and find three points that are all the same distance from each other like that. Um, or you can start thinking about angles to think about that being 60 degrees. Um, so I guess it's possible to put your to look for a triangle like this one. It's kind of a bit uh, a bit shorter than it is wide um, by the appropriate amount. Um, good. Yeah, that got a bit risky, didn't it? That little bit. Got a bit. It's not really fair. Um, I pick an easy base. Um, Easy base, like y equals zero. Yeah, so my circle means they're the same distance from the origin, sure. I should maybe specify that I'm I'm being really careful to make sure they're equally spaced around the circle. So that that's 120 degrees. And I know what sine and cosine of 120 degrees are, so I'm fine. I've carefully, carefully positioned them on the circle. Not just any three points on the circle. I'm not mad. I don't think that any three points on a on a circle give you an equilateral triangle, but the right three points maybe do. Um good. <laughs> yeah, so people in chat have noticed that I'm doing a sneaky complex numbers thing, but it's not really complex numbers. I do genuinely know about <laughs> I do genuinely know about 120 degrees, I promise. Okay, right. Angles going on in here as well. 120 degrees. Um okay, and if you know about complex numbers, then you can maybe find those points by doing complex number stuff. But I'm not even sure that's fast or good. It's just chat putting complex numbers in things again. He he he. Right, okay. Um, once you found those, writing down some lines. What's this then? I think it might be, oh, is that 60 degrees? So I think this might be like tan 60 is root 3. It might be root 3x maybe. Not root 3 over 2? No, root 3x. Something like that. Good. Okay. Oh, main base. Oh yeah, so a suggestion main base, 0, 0. And also you can choose this point to be 1, 0. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Um, picking your equilateral triangle is key. Um, mine's a bit risky because none of the points are at the origin. But anyway, uh, seven's easy. It's the equation. Uh, I think it's y equals root three x for this side of my triangle. If I'm setting it up like that, I think because the height is, I want the height to be root three over two, and I want the base to be one over two over here. If I'm trying to get the other corner at one zero, I want this to be one half. This to be root three over two. So yeah, I think that one. I want that to be y equals root three x. And then this is y equals zero, and then I've got a bit of a job to work out that last last line over here. But I kind of know what's going on. I think the gradient is probably minus root three x minus root three, and it goes through one zero, so it should be all right. Good. Uh, which degree at Oxford attracts the smartest undergrads? Uh, I, I'm biased, obviously. I think it's the mathematics degrees. I think that there's some pretty smart cookies doing the maths degree. And what's my view on the philosophy of, philosophy of mathematics? I like the idea of having a view on the philosophy of mathematics. That's like a second level thing, isn't it? Um, it's like sort of not just having a philosophy, but having a view on the philosophy as well. It's meta. Good. Uh, that's got radius three. The clue is in the radius. Uh, it's nine times pi, I guess. Uh, oh, I've written a lot of these, haven't I? Goodness me, I wrote too many warm-up questions. I'm feeling quite warm. Um, Possibly too warm. Let's just have a quick check because somebody put a YouTube link in the chat moderation. Oh, it was not a Rick roll. It was a song about circles. Let's have that. There you go. You can have that. Um, good. How much of these? Do I, how many of these do I want to do? Uh, we've got some sort of complete square stuff exercise. I'll leave it on the screen for a second to think about uh, finding the equation of that circle, given that it's been messed around with and multiplied out of it. Um, something where the angle at the centre is 120 degrees, so finding some length and stuff. Um, these region calculations are related to the thing that we did right at the start today, um, thinking about chopping up circles into sectors and triangles. Let's draw the picture, just to have the picture going on here. Um, it's x squared plus y squared equals 4, so it goes through 2, goes through 2. The line x equals 1 lives, cross, lives about here, it crosses the circle here and here. Um, so I guess we need to know um, where these points are. 
Uh, but we know that they lie on the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, so I suppose this is 1 comma root 3, and this is 1 comma negative root 3. So just like in the problem we did at the start, we now know everything about that triangle. We know where the corners are, we got it. We, we could work out all the side lengths, we could work out all the angles if we wanted to using the cosine rule. Um, we could do anything we want to, anything we want with it. In fact, I think that turns out to be 120 degrees at the origin. Um, because that root 3 reminds me of the 60 degree thing that I just did for my equilateral triangle. Um, so I think it's 120 degrees. If you don't believe me, do the, do, the, do the maths to check that that's 120 degrees. And then there's this really good trick that we already used at the, about an hour ago at the start of the show. Um, but if you want this area, um, the trick is to think about it as the sector of the circle. Let's zoom in slightly, there we go. The sector of the circle minus the triangle that you don't want. And you know about sectors and you know about triangles, so you can do sector minus triangle and you'll be okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so doing thing subtract thing. The, the classic thing is you get sort of don't know how much times pi minus I don't know how much that's sometimes got a square root in it um, because you did some cosine rule or you did some trigonometry to work out that one. Um, or you get maybe maybe I should write a sine. Let's put a sine in here for a sort of triangle stuff. Um, sine of goodness knows what. Some mess for the other side, like radiuses or something. Goodness me, right, good. Mercing College is one of the colleges that does maths. Um, it has quite a few mathematicians, and I like their tutors. Uh, good. How would you find the area of the triangle quickly? I would use without a ton of Pythagoras. So I know the radius of this circle is 2. And I know this angle over here is 120 degrees. I would use the fact half AB sine theta to, to write down that it's half times 2 times 2 times sine 120 degrees. Uh, only a minute ago that I was bragging that I knew how to work this out. Is that root 3 over 2? Sine of 120 degrees? I think it's root 3 over 2, chat. Yeah, and I've also got how do you, can you use radians? Uh, good, right, cool. Okay, multiply everything together, and I think it's like root three or something. Seems all right. Seems plausible. Someone in the chat's going to tell me I've got sine of 120 degrees wrong, and it will be mm, bad, but not as bad at the time I thought the sphere was a, a cube. Uh, good. Okay. Yeah, people have got three different methods. Oh, there we go. Three methods that have suddenly appeared all at once in chat. Thank you, chat. Good. Yep. Whew, phew. Pass. Phew. Uh, good. Can you use radians? Is a question down here. Let's flag it quickly. Um, yes, if you like. The questions will all use degrees. Uh, but you can use radians if you like. Um, you don't have to, but you can if you like. Uh, can you use radians? How did I know the angle was 120? Um, I know everything about this triangle. There is, uh, you'll be amazed. I know where this corner is. I know where this corner is. I know where this corner is. I know all the angles. I know <laughs> there are no mysteries about this triangle. Um, it, you, you can do it too. You know where all the all the corners are. There's no, nothing you can't work out by this triangle. You can work out the angle if you like. If you really want to, you could use the cosine rule to work out the to work out the angle, because uh, you know all the side lengths as well. Um, you know that this side length is two times root three because of the distance between those points. Sorry, I'm just throwing the question off the screen. There we go. Uh, you know, you know this side length um, because it's. 2 because it's part of the circle, you know that side length because it's 2 because it's an isosceles triangle. Um, so you could use the cosine rule if you wanted to find that angle, or you could draw this bisector in, and you can think about half the isosceles triangle, you can think about how that's root 3 up there and 2 up here, and you could spot that that's twice the size of a triangle that you know, which is the 1 root 3 2 triangle. It's twice that triangle that has a 60 degree angle down here. Uh, but really, morally, I suppose, it's because you know where all three corners are, so the triangle contains no mysteries. It is the least mysterious triangle in the world. The most mysterious, of course, being the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, good. Uh, does using radius make it simpler? I'm not sure. Up to you. Um, does it make this angle size of the circle a bit easier to write down? I don't know. It's one third of a circle, however you, however you think about it. Um, I, 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 I don't know. If you want to use radians for this bit, that's fine with me as well. You have to remember how big radians are, but go for it. Um, why did I take radians off the mat? Um, well, this is before I started, actually, but take radians off the mat uh, and 
took radians off the map because uh, they were not being taught in time in uh, schools that were teaching maths and verb maths in parallel. The syllabus changed. Um, oh yeah, triangles are half base times height. Huh. Yeah, that's a quicker way, isn't it? We know how wide the triangle is, and we know how tall the triangle is. The triangle doesn't have any mysteries. <laughs> it's not a very mysterious triangle. That's better than this. Don't do this. <laughs> I'm going to give the same answer. I'm now convinced that I'm correct. Huh. <laughs> Always a better method, isn't there? Um, when do we do the math questions? Well, we already did one, and we're going to do a couple more very, very soon. Because I think we're getting pretty warm now. Here are some circles. Ah, oh, this question is sort of quite mean. Well, not mean, but just uh, it contains a sort of contains a sort of joke. Uh, intersecting circles like this is is quite hard. It's doable. You can do it. Um, I think there was a GCSE question. Was it for your cohort, or was it the year below you? Uh, a GCSE question? Maybe this was the people watching this now. It's a GCSE question, right? With all these like equilateral triangles drawn in. That's this. This is the picture we've got on the screen at the moment, I think. I think it's this. Um, with a whole bunch of equilateral triangles. And everything's nice, because there's loads of 60 degree angles, and it's that GCSE question. Um, how do we do trig on a Bermuda Triangle? First, you need to know where all the corners are, and that's not something people agree on. Um, it is the GCSE one. It was the year below. Year below you. Year below. Year below. Most recent one. Okay, current year 11s. Okay, really? That's soon. Okay. Normally it takes me about a year to hear about this sort of thing, so I'm I'm surprisingly up to date. It's probably because I joined TikTok, and now that I'm on TikTok, I know, I know what all the year 11s are cross about. Triangles. Oh. <laughs> Am I an international student? If I'm watching this on holiday, is I think my favourite chat comment today. So well done, Ben. Um, <laughs> If you're watching this on holiday, then that's that's dedication. Okay, uh, last question, uh, which I threw in. It's got a hint, angles, warm-up question. Um, it is a, a, a secretly a fact about uh, gradients of lines, but kind of disguised a little bit. Um, the idea is you know where all three corners are, so you know everything about this triangle. Uh, in particular, you know that it's got a right angle. Uh, so the hint was to find the, the angles um, in this triangle. Uh, what, two of them are really hard to find, but one of them is a right angle. Um, you can think about that as the gradient between two lines fact. Um, once you've worked out that it's sneakily a right-angled triangle, then you know that you could draw in a circle that goes through all three corners, and the centre is halfway up, halfway up that side, so you know where everything is. Um, um, the TikTok is just my name. It's James Munro Maths. I suppose that's not just my name because Maths is not part of my name, but my TikTok is just James Munro Maths. It's not a very good TikTok. It's very, very new and doesn't really do anything. I don't understand TikTok. Right, good. Um, how would I find that area? Ah, oh, yeah, so the area for question 11, the area is um, this shape. You can split it in two. If you draw this line down the middle, it's a little bit cheeky, but this line down the middle is um, uh, gives twice the area from the previous previous question. Um, all the angles just match up with the situation before. In fact, this line is x equals one. That just goes through the two points of intersection between the circles, and it all works out. Um, three points do uniquely define a circle. Two points, a line. Good. Okay. Math is not part of my name. Good. Okay. Um, <laughs> what a weird thing to say, eh? Um, that is not part of my name. Good, right, okay. I'm feeling warmed up. It is just past six o'clock. We've done a short mat question already. It's time to do a couple more short mat questions. Um, let's have a go. Um, and I'm thinking a little bit, um, because these two questions coming up are both quite visual, um, I'm going to try and explain them in terms that aren't entirely visual. I'm going to try and, try, and, try and make it harder for myself by not just relying on visual visual methods, which is what I would normally do. I'm thinking about, most I'm thinking about the person in chat who said that imagining things is, is different. Um, good, yeah. This time last year, we would have done all the warm-up and all the, all the problems. We'd have rushed through it. We'd have done a couple of short map questions, and I'd have said we'd run out of time. Draw a picture. Yeah, always draw a picture. But that's the visual method, right? Is the map this year? No comments on map this year. Does it involve any cubes that should actually be spheres? No comment. Should we turn a pole on? We like poles, don't we? Let's turn a pole on. Um, so this is a pole for this question that's currently on screen. 
Um, if you've had a go at it already, or if you're trying it along live, um, then put that on the screen. I am smiling because Alfie in chat has just put the chat message, if it's tricky, draw a picky, um, which is uh, lovely life advice, if it's, if it's rhymes. It's pretty good. Um, good. Okay. So here's the question, 2017 1G. Um, we're given a range of theta. It's quite a good range of theta, naught up to 360 degrees. Um, and the line, uh, is that a line? I guess it's a line. If theta is a constant, then this is like y times some constant, minus and there's a mad constant over here, it's like x, and some constant plus some other constant. So I guess I can kind of like divide by cos theta if I really want to. Not certain that I want to divide by cos theta, that's a bit dangerous for particular values of theta. Um, but let's, let's just say that if we could do that, then I think it would be this. I'm trying to make it look more like the equation of a line. Um, plus one, I think. Sine over cos, it's tan. Yeah, okay. So this is y equals x tan theta, which is something we've seen recently, actually. Tan theta for the gradient. Um, plus some weird constant over there. Okay. If in doubt, draw it out. This is brilliant. I'm enjoying these. Um, good. Rearrange. Oh, that was another one I'm reading from chat, by the way. Okay, good. Um, so, what have we got? We've got the equation of a line. And it's going to divide the disk, that's uh, the inside of a circle, I suppose, x squared plus y squared, um, less than or equal to 4. So I should draw a circle. Um, it divides the disk into two regions. Now, this is something we've just been thinking about with lines splitting up circles. Um, it divides it into two regions, which I suppose is true because there's going to be two intersections. Uh, algebraically, that's because there are two solutions to this system of equations given by the line and the outside of the disk is a quadratic expression for the uh, perimeter of the circle. That's got two solutions. Can I tell why it's got two solutions? I suppose I could plug something in and rearrange and do some algebra. Um, it feels more like a ge ge geometry problem, though, if you notice that this line goes through a particular point. It goes through the point minus 1, comma 1, which is inside the circle. That, the concept there of the point being inside the circle and having that idea that as theta changes, the line, well, it, it could be anything, but in fact, these lines have all got something in common, that they all go through this point. Now, I think I spotted that algebraically, really, um, because I looked at the way that plugging in minus 1 and y equals 1 is a solution on the line. Um, it's not on the circle, but it, it is inside the circle, inside the disk. So that's a point that's always there. The line never misses the disk. And because the line doesn't miss the disk, we'll get a couple of a couple of solutions. Yeah, and people in chat telling me that minus one comma one is a good point. And I think you spot that algebraically. Um, I don't think anybody. Well, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but if you're playing along at home, I don't think you rearrange the line and you do something clever with theta to say, ah, I've noticed that this line always goes through this point, um, minus one comma one. Maybe you spot it once you've rearranged the line, but maybe you spot it looking at the equation. That, that you start off with. I'm still being a bit visual because I'm still saying looking at the equation. Um, I'm not talking maybe about guessing numbers. Uh, why isn't my 1 comma minus 1 on the circumference? Uh, well, because this, the distance to the origin is only root 2 for that point, uh, whereas this circle has radius 2, which is bigger than root 2. Um, good. Okay, um, so it's going to have two points. Um, as you change theta, it's going to change the gradient of the line. I can tell that because algebraically my line is like y equals x tan theta. So changing theta is going to change the gradient of the line wildly. Um, I think it can change the gradient to be anything because tan theta goes from negative infinity up to infinity. Um, actually, tan theta goes from negative infinity up to infinity just within 0 up to 180, just between 0 and 180 degrees. So there's something going on there. Um, but the gradient is going to change wildly from minus infinity gradient um, like this. Uh, so theta equals, uh, when is it really negative? Is theta, theta is like 91 degrees. It's going to be a line that goes pretty much um, straight down, um, I think. Uh, yeah, like that. Uh, and when theta equals 0, it's going to be a line that goes straight across. And theta equals like 45 degrees, it's going to be a line that goes 45 degrees, somewhere in between, I guess. Um, tan 0 is 0, so it's just like the line y equals 1 in that case in between. And then over here in the 45 degree case, 
is going up a bit. So there's something going on in between. Um, somewhere in there, the area of the larger region. So as you change theta, I think at some point you notice that theta is the angle above the x-axis. There's this fact about relating the gradient of the line and the angle above the x-axis, um, which we talked about in quite an algebraic way before by drawing, I guess we drew a triangle, but we talked about the, the relationship between tan and some sides of an imaginary triangle that was uh, involving our line. Um, I think as you change theta, as that line sweeps around, um, you have a large area, larger area on one side, which is maximized when that line is at 45 degrees. Because then the line is at right angles to the radius, joining that point to the center. And it feels to me like that's the, that's the maximum that the big area could be. haven't proved that at all, don't need to for a multiple choice question. Turns out it is true. Um, <laughs> but there's a sort of trap here because I explore all possible angle all possible um, all possible gradients of line as I as I change theta from zero up to 180 degrees. But then between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, it all happens again. The line keeps rotating if you're thinking about this graphically. Um, or you could say that well you get tan is periodic, so you get back the same line that you had before. Um, so in this range, north up to 180 degrees, that gives you all the possible lines, but then 180 degrees to 360 degrees gives you all the possible lines again. So there is another maximum uh, of a, a, the area, as a function of theta. It's another one that happens 180 degrees later. So I think this first maximum happens when theta is 45 degrees, which you either believe or you don't believe, and it doesn't really matter. There's one there's one value in that first range. But there's another value at 225 degrees, um, where theta is, uh, where the area is again maximized. Uh, crucially, it's the, this way that it's defined as the area of the larger region, rather than the area of the region clockwise from the line or something, or something else. Okay. How do I know that point's a constant? Well, I know that, okay, so backing up a bit, people want to justify each step of this. Yes, yeah, so I know it goes through minus one, one, just by looking at it, because I can see that if I put minus one in here and I put one in here, then the equation's true. <laughs> um, spotting points that lie on the line is a good thing to be able to do. This one is written a little bit like that, um, the format y minus y1. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's kind of formatted a bit like that, except m has been broken up into a sine part and a cosine part. Um, but if you divide by cosine, which you're not really supposed to do, but if you divide by cosine, then it's uh, not too bad. Um, I think the answer is two values of theta, um, 45 and 225. But you don't actually need to solve what the values are. Values are. Um, chat agrees, 89%, uh, with some votes for one value, which I totally understand. Um, there's really one, there's one picture you draw for here's the line, here's the line showing us the, um, showing the, biggest possible a of theta, but unfortunately that happened twice, two different values of theta. Yeah, it's symmetrical, okay. Um, what happened to the less visual method? Yeah, okay, so I started talking about lines sweeping around, it didn't quite work, did it? Um, cheating a bit, da, 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 da. Is it cheating if you get the right answer on multiple choice? No, if you get the right answer on multiple choice, you get the right answer on multiple choice, you get the marks. Get, um, in another, do you want, Maximizing the area, yeah, so cosine is potentially negative, but that's all right. Divided by negative numbers is allowed. I'm a bit worried about whether it's zero. Um, negative gradients, oh yeah, negative gradients come up when, uh, so I kind of got a bit, I didn't draw very convincing pictures later here, did I? I showed you zero, 45, and 91. 91 is a weird picture to draw. Um, I should have kept drawing pictures to show you what happens when theta is, um, when theta is bigger than 90, bigger than 90. Um, I think it's actually negative gradient in the 91 case. I think it should be slightly leftwards, um, slightly left leaning. Um, what am I saying? I'm trying to imagine how big tan theta is. Let's draw a picture of tan theta. Tan theta goes up like this. So I was trying to show you one where it was very, very negative for the 91 case. But then there's a bunch of cases over here up to 180 degrees where tan is negative. Okay, so. The gradient is negative and it goes through this point, 
when theta is between 90 and 180. Oh, that's behind chat. Zoom. Negative gradient. Good. Okay. Um, yes. Right. Catching the chat. How much do people prepare? Well, I, I sort of think that if you're watching a live stream months before the mat that's entirely about mat questions, then you're preparing quite a lot. Um, good. Does working explain or does working get you marks for multiple choice? Um, no, so the marks are always awarded. You know, the marks for the question are always awarded for getting the right answer. Um, no marks if you're wrong. Four marks if you're right. Um, sometimes tutors can go back and look at your working to work out. You know, if maybe you were wrong but you were close, and if it's borderline case, then uh, tutors might go back and look at the math thing, uh, the math script. Uh, okay. I'm going to guess that final answer of two values. Um, so I suppose I've got to two values because I've convinced myself in my head that um, I understand what's happening as theta changes. If it's not obvious to you what happens when theta changes, I think you should draw some pictures. Um, I've drawn four pictures in a terrible order. Um, I drew 91, 0, 45, and then I tried to draw 225 and it wasn't very convincing, or I tried to think about drawing some other numbers in between 90 and 180. Um, that's me messing around with the problem and trying to draw things that I think are helpful for me to understand what's going on. Um, I've drawn angles that I was thinking about, different values of theta, just try them out. Um, it is very unlikely that those are the same angles of theta that you would draw when you're messing around with the problem. Um, so if you want to try this problem at home, I would suggest messing around with it to try and draw the line for different values of theta. And I think you'll work out what's going on as theta changes all the way from zero to 360 degrees. Uh, good. Do I know there isn't another solution? Um, how do I know that? It's a good question, I suppose. Um, so, can I do this convincingly or can I do this unconvincingly? I can do this unconvincingly first. Draw a bigger picture. <laughs> well, I claim that line is the maximum. And that if you go a little bit off, if you go to a different angle that's wonky compared to this 40, this lovely 45 degree case, then you gain a bit of area over here on the big for the big for the big side. You gain a bit of over here, but you lose quite a lot of area over this side. I could do some trigonometry to try and work out how big those bits are. Um, I really, really don't want to. Um, to me, it just seems pretty sensible that this side is smaller and you're losing a little bit of area on the other side, gaining quite a big bit. Good, okay, cosine 90 is zero and you do need to worry about 90 degrees just a little bit. Uh, in the case cosine 90 degree, in the case when theta is 90 degrees, let's worry about that together. That's why I wrote 91 over here. Um, in the case 90 degrees, um, cosine is zero. So the left-hand side just reads zero and the right-hand side reads x plus one times one. So this is the line x equals negative one, which is a vertical line. Bosh. Uh, which does divide the circle, in, the circle into two regions. We are very good at working out how big those regions are because it's the one from the warm-up question rotated by 180 degrees. Um, so uh, you're, you could work that out. We don't need to though. Good. Okay. 2d5 looks just like 45. That's the, that's the point. Yeah. 2d5 looks just like 45. Same picture. How much space do we get to do working? Uh, more space than this. This is not realistic. Um, the actual mat is printed on paper that's paper that's slightly bigger than A4, and it's two short printed as two short questions on each page. So you get about what's that? About A5, plus there's blank paper at the back of the booklet, and um, questions that you're not doing because it's printed with some computer science questions that you're not doing if you're a mathematician, and it's printed with some extra maths questions that you don't do if you're a computer scientist. Um, they come with some black paper as well, which is kind of free real estate for you to use as extra bits of paper. Oh, is that a Desmos thing? Oh, let's have a look at this Desmos thing. Sorry, just moderating chat. It's something I do live while also presenting. There we go. That is exactly the Desmos plot that I was hoping it would be. Everyone look at this Desmos chat. I realise if you're watching the replay and you can't get access to the chat, I realise it's quite hard to access the Desmos, but worth a go because it's, it's nice. Oh, is this another Desmos? Let's have a look. This is also the Desmos that I thought it would be, 
but labelled in a slightly different way. So I like that too. Right, cool. That's enough decimal systems for this. Oh no, there's a third one. I'm going to do the third one. I feel bad for Kai otherwise. Kai, is that a Desmos of this setup as well? Yes. There you go. Three people have Desmos this simultaneously, which is very nice. Um, people talk about hours. I really don't. I don't. I don't like. I'm. It's not how I think about maths, right? To have this like hours on the clock, like a nine to five thing. I don't really know. Um, Kai did it in degrees. Is that true? Kai, did you convert to? I oh, Chris is like in radians. I see. If you convert, <laughs> converting, converting Desmos to degrees. Right. Okay. People watching the replay have got three different Desmos things to to check, which is is tough. Um, how do you know it pivots about minus one one? We've been through this. I think I know that it goes through the point minus, minus one one because I could plug in numbers and spot that that point is always on the line. After that, once I know it's a line going through that point, pivoting is the only thing that it can do. Good. Right. Okay. Let's do another one. That was good. I liked that. Um, and am I going to try and be visual on this one or not visual? I don't know. We will find out when we do the question. How are we doing? We got our live stream going. It's happening. Uh, 2016, question one I. That's me looking at YouTube to see whether whether YouTube is cross with me. It says that my uh, my bit rate is too high. Which, good. Okay. Um, why is there not another line which is perpendicular, which causes the same area split? I think the perpendicular line splits the circle in two, in half, 50-50. And that's not a maximum for the area. I think that's a minimum. I think the picture really is, as the line rotates, one side gets bigger and the other side gets smaller. Um, so the, the larger side has a maximum. And then after that, the big side gets small and the small side gets big until you get to this perpendicular sort of setup that I've just been asked about in chat, where both sides are the same size. Uh, both sides being the same size is the smallest that the larger side could be because they're fairly split at that point. Um, da, 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 not be visual, please. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and this question, but if we've been talking about aphantasia a bit, I should actually probably learn about aphantasia because it's, come on, do I mean parallel? Oh yeah, okay, so parallel, there aren't any parallel lines that also go through that point. And we know that the lines go through this one point. There's only one line that goes through that point. Hey, Alpha's giving me some working out. Thanks, Alpha. Um, looks good to me, right? Or is that an argument that it's actually four solutions? Looks good. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's a completely different method. Okay, Alpha, I might look at that at um, some point. Uh, you've got a thumbs up from someone, so maybe it's good. Okay, um, we're trying this question, which has been on screen for a minute here. I'm very restless, so I'm going to start reading it out. Um, it's about numbers. So you can interpret this question entirely in numbers. We're going to try not being visual in the geometry live stream for some some extra challenge. Um, the lighting has gone quite strange, hasn't it? It's very, very cosy. Um, if, let A and B be positive real numbers. If x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, then the largest that AX plus BY can equal is. So there's a question about maximizing a function uh, given a restriction, which is an entire branch of mathematics. It's interested in questions like this, um, optimization. Is all about taking uh, constraints and objective functions and trying to make one of them big. Uh, so this question is sort of inspired by that theory, I suppose. Um, it's in the geometry section, um, and that's because you can do this question geometrically. I think that if you like inequalities, you can also do this question algebraically. Um, first, let's note that we're told that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, but a and B are positive, so we can make AX plus BY bigger. We can increase it if we make X or Y bigger. So if they're not already big, and we could make X or Y bigger, then let's go for it. Um, in particular, if, if X squared if X squared plus Y squared is less than 1, um, then make both bigger. Um, I think that's important, that we've been given the freedom to have X squared plus Y squared is less than or equal to 1. Um, but then we're going to have a times x plus b times y. I think we want x and y to both be, you know, I don't know if we need both of them to be big numbers, but we shouldn't make both of them small numbers. Um, a Fantasia could, should probably be dis disclosed. Um, I mean, I don't know about probably should. Sorry. It's up to you whether you disclose disabilities. Um, 
uh, it seems the more we talk about it in this geometry live stream, the more relevant it seems. Um, good. Ah, some people have done decision maths. If you have done decision mathematics, then you will have seen some other examples of objective functions and constraint functions. Um, I'm not sure how helpful that is today. Okay, make both of them bigger. Um, so let's consider, let's be greedy. Let's make x squared plus y squared equal to one. Okay, it seems pretty good. Um, if you like calculus, you are now off to the races. If you know actually more calculus than people know for Matt, um, you can now go and you know multiply out some things, square some things, differentiate some things, and just find the answer with calculus. Um, but where's the fun in that? Can I do this question only using Matt level stuff? Not sure. Not sure at all. Um, yeah, as Kai says in chat. Sorry, let's just switch this poll off quickly. Um, as Kai says in chat, there is no disadvantage to disclosing disabilities. Uh, not perpendicular, but reflection in the x-axis. Uh, and that turns out to be perpendicular because the line is 45 degrees. Um, okay. Yeah, so if you can differentiate this function, there's a complicated function that someone's just put in chat. It's an anonymous, anonymous person. If you know how to differentiate that, then you have a derivative method of doing this chat. Me me derivative method. So it sounds bad if I call it a derivative method, which um, is to maximize the function ax plus b root 1 minus x squared. I'm not sure I love this question, because if you know how to differentiate that, then you have a sort of an advantage that you can now just go and do the question by differentiating, differentiating that function. To do that, you need to know the chain rule and the product rule, or at least the chain rule. Yeah, just the chain rule, I think. But you need to know the chain rule. And then that's not on the math syllabus. So I'm going to pretend that we don't know how to differentiate this. Uh, I did not write this, so this is not on me. This is not on me. Um, I'm allowed to describe. I, I can also describe questions that I wrote as, as not being a fan of them, but it is true that I didn't write this one. Um, I should absolutely be able to do math questions using math level mathematics, obviously. Thank you. Yes, in case it's not clear, I am now going to do the question not using this method. Okay, good. So we're somewhere on this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's a circle. Recognize the equation of a circle. Um, and we would like to make ax plus by be large. Um, one way to approach this is to say, well, this thing, ax plus by, that's constant on a line with negative gradient. There's a lot to take in there, but what I'm trying to imagine is where is this constant? Um, where, is, where does this take a particular value? Because if I can understand where this takes a particular value, I can try and understand where this takes its biggest possible value. Um, this is understanding the value of the function before you try to understand the maximum value of the function. Okay, so where is this equal to zero? Um, obviously, I, I probably want it to be bigger than zero, but hey, it's equal to zero at points like, for example, the origin, but then also points y equals negative ax over b, which is some line like this y is negative x over ax over b. Um, that's where it's equal to zero. Okay, I, probably I can make it bigger than zero. Um, this is a pretty rubbish first bound. Um, but maybe I can think about where it's equal to one or something. Can I think about where it's equal to one? I'm not sure, but that looks like the equation of a line, right? Um, a line where x or y or both, I suppose, would be bigger. Um, so maybe let's line out here. Maybe that's ax plus by equals 1. Um, it's another line. And in fact, this function is a constant on uh, lines like that. Uh, lines that are parallel. Uh, lines that are parallel and lines that uh, have uh, that, that gradient and different values of the constant, different values of the y-intercept, you could say. Okay, um, a and b are fixed. So this is sort of a problem where we know the gradient of the line and we want to make the value really big. Um, I've drawn this example where the value is zero. That was rubbish. Um, as I make this number bigger, the line, the y-intercept moves upwards. Uh, at some point, it moves through the top of this circle at one, but I think I can still make the value bigger. Uh, there's still something left on the table there because I can make the y-intercept actually bigger than one, but still have some intersection with this circle. I can keep doing that right up until the point where I have just a tangent to the circle. This is the kind of interesting case. Sort of boundary case, I suppose. Boundary between 
do you get two solutions and you can say there are points that have this value or do you get no solutions and you say ah there are there are no points on the circle on the constraint no points on that constraint circle that actually have that value good and then do some tangent stuff as soon as you see a tangent and a circle you should probably draw in the right right angle you know the gradient of that line you can therefore work out the gradient of the the line joining the center to that point once you know the gradient of that line you know everything about the problem because you know you know the circle you know you know the circle you know the the, the line equation of the line for the radius you can intersect those and find that that point there you've you've had the idea at this stage um, is aphantasia not a disability? I really need to learn about aphantasia. This is educational for me, thank you. Um, always trying to learn. Doesn't count. Essentially self disdiagnose Oh gosh, because it's... Uh, right, I've mixed up with a physical thing, but it's men now. Of course, there's such a thing as a mental disability, but that's harder to diagnose, maybe? I need to learn about aphantasia. I've been thinking recently a lot about how my imagination, my, the way I work, think is surprisingly visual. Um, uh, I'm interested in how aphantasia works, I guess. Learning a lot today, thank you. Um, is Oxford going to take into account GCSEs this year on a different note? Um, we're going to get the data about GCSEs, but we know that the data is quite noisy. Um, we're more interested in how well you do on the mat in terms of maths submissions. Uh, because the mat is a test that everyone is doing and it's got math questions on. Your GCSEs were on loads of things. Uh, don't get this one. Uh, smiley emoji. Um, let's let's run it. Let's run through the the exciting bit again. There's a kind of boring bit at the end that I accelerated massively at the end. Um, once we've got down to this picture, where we know the gradient of this line, we know m for this line. Um, once we get down to this picture of knowing this circle. Ah, and knowing the uh, gradient of that line for the tangent, uh, then you can you kind of know everything. You can work out where that point is. I, I trust you to go and do that calculation. That could be a warm up sort of question, right? Well, you know the circle, you know the gradient. Um, the idea that that is the thing we want to do is quite tricky. Um, and that comes from thinking about uh, the circle, x squared plus y squared equals one being a kind of constraint. Um, we're interested in points on this circle. We want to know which ones have the biggest value of ax plus by. So I've drew some examples to start off with to think about where ax plus by is equal to zero, which is not a very big value. Um, I can think about where ax plus by is equal to negative one, which is a disaster, it's terrible, it's much worse. Um, but again, look, here are the two points where it's equal to minus one. Here are the two points where it's equal to zero. I don't actually know, I suppose, I know I know where they are in terms of a and b, but I don't, I don't know, no, because I don't know the values of a and b. What I can do is I can make the value bigger um, until find, I find maybe, aha, maybe as I increase the value, I get a bit more greedy. Can I make ax plus by be a little bit bigger? And I can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I can still find these two points. There's this kind of critical point where I get too greedy and I can no longer say that there are there are, there are no longer two points on the circle where, where um, it actually takes that value. The intermediate, the crossover point, the biggest, the greediest I can be is when I make that line a tangent to the circle. And I just get one point. I don't even get two points of intersection with the circle, I just get one. Um, and that's the greediest I can be. And in that very greedy case, um, I've made this y-intercept really big, I've made the uh, the value of ax plus by I've made really large, um, and uh, I've just got one point, one point, which takes that, that value of ax plus by. Um, and then there's some sort of, what I would call maybe C1 maths um, to Go and say we know that the gradient of this line is minus b over a minus a over b. So the gradient of this line is b over a. So this point here is something like b uh, a comma b divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared or something. So then I know the distance and I know the value is a squared plus b squared over root a squared plus b squared or something mad like that, which is I think option c. Goodness me. Did I have a poll for this one? I think I did. At one point at one point there was a poll. The poll went well. Ish, well ish. There's a lot of votes for B there as well. Uh, max A B. Ah, max A B is what you get if you plug in the corners of the circle. Um, the corners of the circle being <laughs> the corners of the circle being these four points, the top and the sides and the bottom. Um, and the corners of the circle 
give you uh, the right, uh, give you the maximum uh, if the circle had straight lines in between these four points. So if you pick B, it's because you've mixed up circles and squares, and uh, you've done the you've done the right calculation, but you've got a square instead of a circle, uh, and then that is the, the maximum value for, for along a, a along a square, I think. Cool. Not totally sure if that made sense. I just wanted to do the circle square joke and accuse you of making the same mistake as me. Uh, right, cool. I know the gradient of the line because I know the line. The line looks like this. It looks like uh, this equals constant. And I can rearrange that to find the gradient. Good. Um, if you work at Oxford, does that still mean Googling? Um, we've got access to loads of academic papers. Um, I can access oh, so much stuff. I am also going to Google it. Um, good. And look, somebody's even linked me to the Wikipedia in chat as well. Uh, I can go and talk to experts in Oxford if I need to. Um, I might talk to the Disability Advisory Service as well to see if this is on, on their radar as a thing to think about the support students on course. Good. Uh, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Wouldn't A-level maths grade make any difference? Make any difference to your application? Didn't you say you just got your maths A-level grade today? Congratulations on your maths A-level grade. Um, how is A-X plus B-Y at a maximum there? Um, the maximum... Well, I suppose the maximum because I can't make it any bigger. If I make it bigger, then there aren't any points of intersection. Um, uh, yep, yeah, cool. Circles do not ha actually have corners. Um, that was a joke. Right, good. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so max AB, this is the function uh, that takes the maximum. Max is short for maximum. Um, it's supposed to be A if A is bigger than or equal to B, and, and B otherwise. Um, takes the biggest one. Um, I think it's true that if you plug in, not the coordinates, but if you plug in 1, 0. Yeah, so if people just plug in 1, 0, then... If you check this point, then you get, so at that point, it's A, at 0, 1, it's B. So then people have picked the maximum of those two values, maximum of those two, and sort of stopped plugging in numbers. I think it's true. Why did I draw the diamond then? I sort of want to check if my square joke works. Sorry. In the like highlight clip, you just, you just play the joke. You don't get the description. Uh, why did I think that was... Because then they're not equal, so then it is the right answer. The lines don't line up with the size of the square, but it is still... Is it If it was a diamond instead, then the maximum would be at a corner? Unless the... Yeah. Okay. If it was a diamond instead, <laughs> if it was this square instead, then the answer would be A or B. Uh, maximum of A or, maximum of a or B. Okay. So this is the, B is the right answer if instead of the circle, X squared plus Y squared less than 1, it's the square this square <laughs> gets through those points. Y squared gradient minus b over a. Okay, so the line is ax plus b y equals constant. I can rearrange that to be y equals c over b minus a over b x. Uh, <laughs> and the line was the gradient was minus a over b, and then the gradient of the radius was something else. Uh, oh, do a level grades make a difference to getting an interview? Um, I think probably not because if you've already got an A star, that's almost the same thing as being predicted an A star, because almost all of our applicants go on to get the A star in maths. So it's great that you've got it. Congratulations, that's in the bank. That is, instead of instead of us being 99% sure that you're going to get an A star in maths, we're now 100% sure that you're going to get an A star in maths because you've got it. But there's a very small difference between 99 and 100%. Oh, the gradient of the tangent? Yeah, the gradient of the tangent, because I know the tangent, I know the line of the tangent. Good, right, okay, I think I'll go around in circles. Pythagoras. People are not happy with this one. What does x plus by represent? Um, so it's equal to constant on a line. This is the equation of a line. And it represents the thing that we're being asked a question about. I'm trying to maximize it. Cool, right, I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Rafa got an A star. I don't think you'd be asking about this if you didn't get the A star in maths. Right, good. Uh, Rafa's live stream regular as well. Okay. You got A star, right, Rafa? Okay. <laughs> um, we've got a long question to go. Um, it's in five parts, which have been, in, in the one I've got on screen, massively spaced out. In the actual map paper, this is printed on a kind of booklet. Each page is like A4. You get some question at the top, and then some space normally, and then the next page. 
Um, I thought that was a tough multiple choice question, by the way, that last one. I thought it was really tough. Um, it involved having an idea and then actually doing quite a lot of geometry stuff at the end. Turning it into a geometry problem is not obvious. Um, thinking about lines where it's constant, it's pretty, pretty tricky. Um, so there's a bunch of bunch of things like that going on. Um, cool. Um, do I think maths is a problem? Um, <laughs> I've thought about this quite a lot. Um, let's not do this right now, but let's just say that there is a lot of maths. Um, it is surprisingly difficult to get up to date with modern mathematics. Last hundred years, people have done really a lot of really good mathematics. Um, getting up to date with it, really hard. Um, Raphael got a baby. Okay. Um, so you've done maths early, but then you're going to do maths probably again in year 13? Because you're currently in year 12? You're just going to reset it, right? And then you're in the same place as everyone else. Okay. Unless that was a joke. I the impression that was not a joke, so I'm going to interact with that as if it's not a joke. And now it's socially awkward. Cool, good. Um, somehow found this long question uh, easier than the three multiple choice questions. I think this long question is very nice. It's kind of got a good idea to it. It is a... Oh, it's a different refer. It was a joke. It was a joke! <laughs> it was a joke! <laughs> refer got the A star. Brilliant. Uh, right, good. Okay, phew. Um, oh, sorry, other Raphael, if you're not... Oh, yeah, there we go. I don't think anyone felt bad except me. I felt bad for assuming... Anyway, cool, right, good. <sighs> right. Okay, everyone's cool, everyone's cool. <laughs> um, right, circular radius 1 and a circular radius 3 are drawn between two lines, just touching both lines. I, felt, I can't believe I fell for the thing of people pretending to be each other in chat. There's Nicholas Latifi in here. At some point, am I going to fall for the thinking it's Nicholas Latifi and be... Oh, Deary me. Not having a good day. <laughs> My day's gone down. It's four stars at the start, and then I've mixed up cubes and spheres. I've also mixed up Raphael and the other Raphael. I'm not being elitist. B is an amazing grade. Oh, you're going to get... I'm getting cancelled. Okay, right, you're gonna, oh, I'm being cancelled. Um, circles C1 and C2 are drawn between these two lines. This is going to be very messy in the edit. Um, cutting out all of the cutting out all of the elitism and just doing the circles. Don't clip that. Right. Okay. Uh, what is the centre of circle C1? Uh, we've been told it's got uh, radius one and it just touches both lines. Um, now it's a little bit harder to see this, but we do know a lot of stuff about this. Um, we can draw in this uh, bisector, I suppose. There's some similar triangles going on in here. We've got some right angles. We've got some some Similar triangles because they share some side lengths. Um, side, side, and then maybe the other side as well. Yeah, I'm drawing in this. This angle's alpha. So we know quite a lot. We know the the um, angle down here. We know the radius. So we know the um, we know the coordinates. Is this the origin over here? I should have read the setup of the question at the top. The line L passes through the origin. Oh, hooray! Passes through the origin. That is the origin over there. Good. Uh, can we not do half oh, hashtag operation get James fired? It's not very. If I'm cancelled, could I do it? All oh, right, okay, yeah. Don't get cancelled just yet. Um, good. Um, what are the coordinates then? So we've got one over here. Opposite, we've got an adjacent. Sounds like we want to do something involving tan the tan alpha. I've got to think pretty hard though. Uh, what do I know? So it's. It's, it's y coordinate is 1, and the x coordinate, I'm being really careful, trying my little triangle. 1, right angle. Whoa. So I know that tan alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, so I've, I've not fallen for this, it's 1 over tan alpha. Okay, so the center of the circle is 1 over tan alpha, comma, 1. Good, I've become nervous. <laughs> uh, brilliant, right. What's the equation? So we know the circle, we know the radius. The radius is 1, and we know the centre. This is a warm-up sort of, sort of question, where you know the radius and you know the centre. So you just write down the equation of the circle. We did that in the warm-up. Actually, we may have skipped it in the, in the warm-up, but never mind. Um, here is the punchy, hard bit of the question. Um, it's part 3. Um, for what value of alpha do circles C1 and C2 uh, touch? 
So at this point, you go sort of uh, record scratch, uh, rewind. What is C2? We've only been talking about C1 so far. And you scroll back up again, and you realize that aha, C2 is the circle of radius 3. And I've just been told that it touches circle C1. So let's try and draw that on the picture as well. Goodness me. Right, OK. Uh, this is the problem in the YouTube thumbnail. So we've got to do it right. A new thing for this year that we put one of the problems into the thumbnail. Uh, the very first time we did that in sequences in series, I then proceeded to save the problem until two hours in and then get the answer wrong. Uh, so got got a got a problem there. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Good. Okay. Um, I know lots of the side lengths involved in this in this shape. Um, there are some similar triangles going on as well. Can you see them? Uh, I've got these right angles because tangent and circles. Look how I draw in my ta tangent radius right angle straight away. Um, I know this this distance is one over tan alpha. And I suppose by similar triangles, I know that this distance here is oh gosh, don't panic, it's two over tan alpha. Okay, so I know some distances. Seems pretty nice. Um, I think I know these lines are parallel, so I could sort of drop this over here, draw in this right angle. And then I know that's 2 over tan alpha is this distance over here. I know it's 2 over tan alpha, by the way, because the long triangle is 3 times as big. So this, this distance in between is, is 2 times as big as that thing. I think the diagram is not to scale, by the way. Um, I've dropped a perpendicular that way. So this is like 1 here. This is like 2 over here. It's feeling pretty OK at the moment. Um, I've got distance over here. I've got that, that bit 4, 1, and 3 up here. I can see a triangle. Having a lovely time. doing the thing that chat always wants me to do, and just focusing on the math for a second. Um, I've got a triangle up here, and I think I know loads of the sides. Yeah, I know I know loads of the sides. Um, there's a 2 over here, and, and I guess this angle is alpha as well, because those of the lines are parallel. So is there anything I don't know about this triangle? I know where the corner is. I know where this corner is. I can probably say where this corner is as well. And at that stage, you know everything about a triangle, right? Once you know where all three corners are, you're done, right? Um, in fact, I know the hypotenuse is 4, and that side over there is 2. Let's zoom out quickly. Uh, I found a triangle. I can draw my triangle. Um, it's got some radiuses on it, so there's a big pitch, bit of the circle, bits of circle here, but you know, the length overall is 4. And then this side over here is 2. This is the triangle I've just discovered up there. And I'm pretty sure this angle is alpha, because things are parallel and things are going well so far. So I think that means that opposite over hypotenuse sine of alpha is equal to two quarters, which is one half. I know that number. That is 30 degrees. I think. Chat will tell me. Um, the circles have no corners or infinite corners. Brilliant. Um, uh, chat did tell me to focus quite a lot in the first one. And then we got a little bit better in the second one. And then we got a little bit worse in the third one. Um, for example, right now. Um, good. We've got an angle. I described that as the hard part of the question, but I now realise that I meant the next part. <laughs> um, this value of alpha. No, I don't. I mean the last part. And it's the last part that's the clickbait bit in the YouTube thumbnail. Okay, the next part's not hard either. What are we doing? We're having a lovely time. We're just having a lovely time drawing some circles. Um, a part four of this question. And um, for this value of alpha, where the circle C1 and C2 touch, um, there's a third circle, C3, which is larger than C2, and it's drawn in between the line and the x-axis. On my version on screen, this goes over the next page. On the actual map paper for 2016, this was all neatly on one page. I've given myself these big gaps to answer the question. Uh, and then I'm going to go and answer it on the diagram instead. Um, so C3 just touches both lines and also touches C3. Let's see if I can try and draw that. My goodness. Oh, dear. And then... Oh, yeah, perfect. Just touches that line, just touches that line, touches the circle as well. So I've got another setup over here um, where I could draw in. I know that the radius of this is 3. I don't know the radius over here. Uh, and I could draw in this tangent and right angle. I'm going to do that one again. That was bad enough. I'm doing another take. Um, I draw that in over there. And then I, the question is what's the radius of this big circle that's tangent over there as well? Um, uh, why is the pink alpha al angle alpha? Uh, let's zoom quickly to the pink al al alpha. I am speed speed running a little bit because I'm running out of time. Um, speed running just a bit, maybe too much. Um, why was that pink angle alpha? Um, 
So I can see some parallel lines um, here and here. All right, let's not draw that. Parallel lines. Um, and I know that this thing down here is alpha. And this line is quite wobbly. I'll give you that. But there's this line that goes from the origin all the way through the centers of these, these circles and their points of tangency. It's a line of symmetry of the picture of all these circles and angles. Um, circles are very symmetric. This picture of two lines is quite symmetric down the middle. So I've just drawn this line down the middle. Everything's nice and symmetric down that line. So this, goodness, look at it. So it wobbles this way and then it goes up and it wobbles around here and then it's sort of two lines over here for a bit and then it goes up here. Believe, me, believe it or not, that's supposed to be all one line. Does Myro have... <gasps> Does this work? Can I do... A masterpiece. That's just what I want. No, that's, that's, that's terrible. Right, cool. Okay, not that. One day I'll learn how to use this properly. Not a connection line. Can we do like a... I've got, I've got 10 minutes. We're going to do this question. It's going to be fine. I'm also going to learn how to use this software. Can I use just a straight line, please? Is that a thing in this software? Hello? No. No, no, no. Ah, options. Do I want to make a mind map? No, not right now. Okay, good. Right, we're going to stop pressing buttons. Uh, then, yeah, people are off. Good, let's go. Okay. Uh, there are some parallel lines and there are some uh, matching angles. This straight line crosses two parallel lines. There is a kind of uh, railway track property. If you've got two parallel lines and you have a different line that crosses them, then the angles will match up. I can't remember what that theorem is called. I've got a feeling it's called the F theorem because it's the letter F. Um, maybe or maybe, maybe not. Who knows? It's a good fact. But parallel lines. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, we're trying to find the radius of this big circle. Is it in shapes? Maybe. Oh, shapes, maybe. Come on, chat. All shapes. Ugh. Diagramming. This is terrible. Oh, I don't like this at all. Uh, no, we, we get it again. We get it again. We'll... No, no, go away. Okay, right. Learning features. Completely over overrated. We'll try this next time. Okay, go. Right. <laughs> this software has quite a lot of features. Um, there are different strategies that you could use to try and find the radius of this big circle. Nightmare to edit it afterwards. Um, you could call it R, and you could try and do some, some work like we just did to think about this uh, shape up here, dropping a perpendicular maybe, and thinking about how uh, the whole thing is R, and maybe we could split it up into R and R minus 3, and think about angles. Believe it or not, there is another angle alpha in there because of some more parallel lines going on. Um, but that's actually a much easier approach. Um, so if you want to see that approach with writing a big R and draw in some triangles, do some geometry, do some triangle stuff, bash it like that, then you'll be, you'll be all right. Um, but, uh, um, there's a better method, which I want to show you as well. Oh, it's called corresponding angles. Very good, okay. Kai's gonna find me the line tool over there. And the suggestion I use the rectangle, I've got a feeling the rectangle tool might be lined up with the axes. You draw the line and click the straight line option afterwards. That's very tempting. Oh, this is that's a, that's terrible. Can I draw a straight line now? Is it always okay? Ah, there we go. Okay, great to know. Brilliant. Thank you, anonymous person. You didn't put a name down, but you win today. Of the teaching James how to use the computers competition. <laughs> it's not it's not a catchy title, but that's that's what we get. Right. Good. Okay. Easier method that I promised to show you. Again, how are we going to edit this down? Um, if you're watching the replay, then I'm genuinely sorry. Um, just can't focus. Um, here is a trapezium. Uh, and over here, let's pick a different colour, is another trapezium. Now these trapezia are similar, which is quite fun to say. Similar trapezia. Um, they have the, the same angles and the side length draw limb ratio. Um, in fact, the, the orange one is just three times as big as the blue one, um, which gives you a quick way to say that the radius of the big circle must be nine because it's just three times as big as the radius of the smaller circle. Um, the picture of this thing that we're doing with two circles tangent between these two lines is the same thing that we were doing in the previous part. And in the previous part, what we really showed is that the, the bigger circle is three times as big as the smaller circle between these particular lines. Um, 
there's actually nothing special about uh, the particular numbers that we ran. Um, earlier, like maybe two hours ago, we had an example where we wrote some numbers in. It was the number three, and then we changed it generally to some general things. You can actually rerun a lot of the argument from uh, from part uh, three here to say, well, actually, I'm going to take my diagram and I'm just going to relabel everything with three times m or something like that. Uh, so to start off with something like that to move it around. It's a geometric sequence. It is a geometric sequence. A weird math wrap. Sounds like a TikTok idea. Let's not, though. Um, good. Is IB good? So somebody asked, is IB good for is IB good for step? And I think IB is probably good enough for step. You might like to look at the step syllabus. We are doing, here we're doing 10 weeks working through, well actually only eight weeks working through everything on the mat syllabus. You might like to do something similar for the step syllabus yourself um, to get ready for what's on step if you are taking the step exam next year. You've got about a year to, to get ready. So there we go. Uh, what mat score would they need if they have perfect GCSEs and perfect IB? Um, I normally say that you can see stats, by the way, on the website, on the MAT website for what MAT scores people had who were shortlisted. I normally say that about 70 is a good score. Um, good. Right. Okay. It's not happening, Gauss. There we go. Oh, I replied before it appeared on the screen. It's not happening, Gauss. Right. Good. Uh, okay. We found this radius 9. We've got to do this last part of the question. We've got four minutes. Let's outline how we would do this last part of the question. Oh, it is the... It's clickbait though, isn't it? Because it's the it's the thumbnail. Right, let's try and do it. Part five. C three doesn't matter anymore. The question is no longer about C three. Forget C three, the big one. Geometric sequence is gone away. Um, we are now interested in none of this picture. No, some of this picture. We are interested in this area. I'm going to try and label it really carefully, including this bit. Down to here. Which I don't know about you, but I can only really imagine doing this by um, starting with the area of the trapezium and subtracting some circles. It's really the only thing I can think of. I know there's some fans of integration in chat who probably want to do this by integrating some absolutely horrible functions. And you're going to have to find out where this point is at the top. And you're going to have to integrate some really nasty functions. So, okay, if you're a big fan of integration, then you could go and do that. But I really want to encourage you not to. I know there's some big fans of complex numbers in chat. You could go and do this with complex numbers, but really, don't don't think so. Um, good. Um, okay. Uh, I would do this by starting with the area of the trapezium. Do we know how big trapezia are? Um, well, it's similar to working out how big a triangle is, I suppose, because this trapezium is just a, a long triangle minus a smaller long triangle. Um, gives you an idea about how big it is, I suppose. Uh, there's a rule for how big they are as well. It's like a plus b times h all over t, um, which here is like 1 plus 3 times the height is 2 over 10 alpha. What on earth is that? All right, something involving root 3, right? Um, something involving root 3. Is it literally root 3? Come on, come on, it's late. Uh, 2 over root 3 divided by 2 or something. Um, to give you some area for the trapezium, and they're subtracting these contributions for how big these areas of sectors are. That's the plan. I'm running out of time. I'm not going to get to a final answer. Sorry, people who clicked on this YouTube video for the thumbnail, watched two hours of rambling mathematics, hoping to get a clean, neat answer, and then didn't. Uh, homework is easy, because this is 120 degrees, and because this is 60 degrees. So it's one-sixth of a circle, and it's one-third of a small circle. Subtracting things. The angle at the lower centre is alpha plus 90. Yes, 120 degrees. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Um, find the area of the triangle. Subtract the segments. Yeah, sectors of the circle. Are they called sectors or segments? Ah, whatever. Subtract them. Good. Yes. If you... Yeah, if you don't have the tiny bit, I always try and draw... I've talked about this question with other people before, and I've always got to try and colour in this tiny bit. It's quite, quite a lot harder without the tiny bit. You've got to do a lot of computation. Uh, why is the area up to a trapezium and not the rectangle? Um, well, I want all of the area bounded by the circles. So I've got to go all the way up to where the circles touch. This horizontal line is just something that I drew in um, when I was trying to solve some angles and some uh, find some angles and some side lengths and things. Um, the horizontal line is not really a split of where this bounded region starts and stops. Um, okay. 
it's a bit late to be doing mathematics for me, I think. Um, so we're going to wrap that one up there, I think. Good. I feel like I should probably know this. I'm going to think about my tan, tan alphas very slightly. Alpha is 30 degrees. Opposite, think about your 30 degrees triangle, come on. One half of the bottom, root 3 over 2 over here, so it's 1 over root 3. It's tan alpha is that. So I should multiply by root 3 because it's being multiplied up. Because divide by tan alpha. Tan alpha is opposite over adjacent, is 1 over root 3. Yeah, tan alpha is 1 over root 3. Yeah, okay. So divide, yeah, 2 root 3. That's the x, that's the height of this one. Multiply. Base A, B over 2, 4, 8, root 3, 4, root 3. 4, root 3 for the trapezium. And then subtract off. This bit of circle over here is pi r squared over 3. And this bit of circle over there is pi r squared divided by 6. So something like 4, root 3 minus pi over 3 minus 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2. Okay, maybe simplify that down. Do I want to simplify that down? 4 root 3 minus over sixths, maybe? So that's 9 sixths, and 2 sixths is 11 pi over 6. Final answer for people who clicked on the thumbnail. Thank you for watching two hours of YouTube video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more completely rambly, chaotic live streams like this one, I want to do a couple of questions from chat very quickly. Um, I saw one really relevant question about IV, which I think I answered that IV is pretty good. You should be okay for transferring to university after doing IV. Um, how do you make those big spaces in LaTeX? Um, I've got some pretty mad, I found a package um, that does that. I'm gonna try and load it up to get the LaTeX for you, but it's a feature of in num item to do a stretchable thing. I Googled it and then I put it, let's just go, I Googled it. And then, see if I can load it up. Because uh, you asked so nicely, I'm going to try and get the two, li two lines of latex snippet. I don't know if you're still here, but hey. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. Uh, the two lines are in, because it was slightly hard to Google, uh, big spaces, I used that package. There we go. Um, Good, right, I have LaTeX code for spacing things out. That was not the most important question that has been asked in chat today. Um, where's the 2, 3, 3? Over 6 or over 6? Yeah, people are correcting my numbers, but fair enough. I think we're going to stop. We did get sidetracked, but that is the fun of doing these, I think. Um, is it a 6, not a 16? Did I write a 16? Ah, oh, I wrote 16! I just can't get, can't get anything right today. Did I at least say 6 out loud? Okay, nobody, nobody, nobody leave, nobody leave. Right, for people watching the YouTube video, thanks for watching two hours of YouTube, including the correction. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You are still here, hooray! <laughs> um, good, remind us to change to find out about aphantasia. Find out about aphantasia. What is the state of science on aphantasia? Good. Does the Rambly live stream represent AIDS? I think it represents the way my brain works, but I don't know about brains, not a neuroscientist. Weird how many times I've had to say that today. Method was the important bit. Thank you, Ben. Um, I had a friend at uni called Ben B, and I am slightly pretending that you are also him, because that would be fun. Four square root of there exists. Right, good, right. We're we wrapping up? I think we're wrapping up. First session. Hey, welcome to the live stream. Good times. Uh, good. Not being further maths, I might have a disadvantage. Uh, it's tricky. Picking up further maths is a lot of work. Um, I like it when people uh, try and teach themselves bits of further maths. Um, good. Okay. Are we done? I think we're done. Reminds to make a math trap and learn about aphantasia. Every day is a school day. We're all learning all the time. That is 500 comments in Slido. <laughs> My goodness. Right. Okay. Look at the picture. So colourful. So nice. We are done. Right. Good. Okay. Personal statement tips. Uh, you do need to write a personal statement. Uh, it does not need to be incredible. It doesn't need to be memorable. Um, it's got information in it, and we are interested in information, uh, not necessarily in writing style, because mathematicians, we like information. We don't need you to have a particular writing style of flair. Good, okay, are we happy? I think we're happy. Uh, more time devoted to the long problems, please. Short ones are sort of doable for key stage five people. Long ones are a bit of a shock. 
because you, the longer questions are quite long. Interesting. I think a couple of the later sheets have got more long questions on, so we'll try and do that at some point. Uh, AS results. Uh, it's nice if you've got them, but we still need you to do the full A levels. If you're doing, if you're if you're on track to do the full A level, we're still going to wait for your A level results. And most people don't have any AS results, so it doesn't help us very much. Okay, cool. I am going to finish there. I think we're going to be back next week for graphs, which is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of graph sketching stuff, uh, drawing different graphs, uh, doing transformations on graphs. Um, and thinking about drawing pictures again. Um, and I will see you next week at five o'clock. Bye. Oh, that's not how the. Oh. <laughs> Did that completely wrong. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. And I will see you next week. Bye. Transition. The transition plays, the transition ends. We switch off the microphone, we go home. Bye.